Here in today's video, there's a couple different things that we are going to do. Number one, I will discuss why I am so bullish on Tesla stock right now. And I know some people are not, some people are super bullish. I just want to provide my perspective and the events that I think will transpire in the next couple of months that leads me to own as many shares of Tesla as I do and to have Tesla such a large weighting in my portfolio, which is roughly if you include all portfolios, like 32% or so. So I am heavily weighted in Tesla and Tesla effectively decides how my portfolio does. So I want to share my perspective with you. So that's number one. Number two, we are going to have some data coming out tomorrow that will move our markets. And I do also want to acknowledge the data that came out this morning, which could be a sign of maybe some pain to come in our markets if indeed this is a trend that is starting. We also have a clip from Dan Ives that I will go ahead and run for you now because I just think honestly you need to hear it because the news they talk about got just pushed under the rug yesterday. Reuters that Fudster article really dominated the headlines for Tesla and I don't want you to miss out on the big news from yesterday. Chinese state media Dan reporting Tesla is proposing rollout, rolling out its robo-taxis in China. Of course, this comes after Elon Musk made a surprise visit a couple weeks ago to Beijing, where he met with the Chinese premier. Assuming it happens, how important, if at all, is China to Tesla's robo-taxi push? Look, China, in, in my opinion, is the hearts and lungs of the Tesla growth story. And if you look at FSD, robo-taxis, this is the first step to ultimately what we view as FSD and autonomous in China for Tesla and Musk. And it would be a historical moment. And I think for, for the Tesla story, obviously navigating challenges the next few quarters, but the golden goose is autonomous and FSD. And China plays a key role there. This is a major shift to what I think we've seen over the last six to nine months Musk continues to play well in that sandbox in Beijing. Did you hear that news? It's almost crazy to think Tesla's stock didn't react to that at all. Nobody cared. We're talking about robo taxis in China, people. I know you guys probably understand how big that news was yesterday, but Wall Street hasn't picked up on it. Now, we've seen this in recent months where retail gets the news and the stock doesn't react to it we're like what's going on why is tesla not reacting to this good news but maybe tesla stocks reacting to price cuts or some kind of fud article from reuters they've seen to do that a few times but then over the next week or two following big money starts to pick up on the good news that we've already went over here on this channel. And I think that what you seen yesterday is probably another prime example of that. I think that's going to happen. I think Wall Street will pay attention and will appreciate the news that came out yesterday, but it could take some time. Also important to remember that shorts are in above their head. They are swimming underwater in short positions, metaphorically speaking and actually speaking, with multi-year highs for the short position in Tesla, short interest, almost 4% of the free flow, which on a company the size of Tesla is insane. You have about $19 billion currently sold short and 106 0.6 million shares that are currently sold short. So short sellers, they cannot afford for Tesla stock to do well here. Now, ultimately, is that going to stop Tesla? No. But when you have that many shorts in short positions, it doesn't take a lot for those shorts to say, hey, we got some good news today. We're going to short the stock today. <laughs> it's simple as that. That extra selling pressure can really put a dampen on the stock in the short term over time. The markets will prove to be more efficient than the shorts and Tesla stock will be rewarded if it does well or not be rewarded if it does poorly. And as I have reported over the past couple of days, there is some very unusual option activity that is taking place in Tesla. 
a lot of this option activity or all of this option activity is from hedge funds and institutions, aka big money. And they're going out, they're making bets that Tesla stock could hit 300 plus dollars per share within six to 12 months. Under the surface, there are some firms that are pretty dang bullish on Tesla and they're making some pretty, what I would call risky bullish bets on Tesla. I mean, if, if, if you're betting Tesla does almost a double up in six to 12 months, that's by definition a pretty risky bet, but that's good for us, right? Because you can see, hey, that's a wild trade. I wouldn't personally want to do that trade, but if a hedge fund or institution is, maybe that means they have more information than we do. Or maybe they're thinking along the same lines as I am. So let me just give you a, a kind of broad overview picture of where we are in the economy and with the Fed. There is clearly some weakening out there. Last month's non-farm payrolls report came in about 60,000 jobs lower than expected. We were expecting a number around 240,000. That number came in at 175,000. And that's just the first number you're going to get revisions on top of that. The revisions could ultimately send us down lower than even 175. Now, today you had weekly insurance registration, well, unemployment insurance registrations that came in over 230,000 for last week. That was well higher than the expectation of around 217,000, and that was the highest weekly unemployment insurance claim since August of 2023, about one year ago. There's definitely some weakness that is happening out there. Look at McDonald's, look at Walmart, look at Dollar General, look at Starbucks, look at KFC and Darden Brands, all of these companies that are warning the consumer is slowing down. So I think it's a factual conclusion the economy is slowing down. We expected it to slow down. And to some degree, that's good news because that means the Fed can ultimately start cutting rates. The problem here, and this is two-sided, so I'll give you the, the bad news, the potential risk factor to be watching for, it's this. The economy is slowing down. Think about 2022. Markets had a rough 2022 across the board. Why was that? Well, you had a technical recession in Q1, Q2, mostly based around inventories. Demand was still good for, you know, products and services. It was mainly just inventories that were built up in 2020 and 2021 that started to get run down in Q1, Q2 of 2022. Now, why did the markets bottom in October of 2022? Well, you had the crash, and 2022 was overall a rough year, but you hit that low in October because everyone thought, literally everyone, at one point Bloomberg was reporting a 100% chance of a recession in 2023. And, and, and what happens? When you're expecting a recession, stocks sell off. Stocks sell off more leading into a recession than normally the actual recession itself. By the time you are declared in a recession, stocks typically tend to bottom about three months after that, a couple months after that. So you normally get most of the sell-off before you actually enter into a recession. So the big risk for Tesla and for our markets is let's say next month's jobs number comes in at 80,000. <sighs> markets are going to start really questioning if this economy can hold up. If we're going into a recession and if that happens, Fed's going to start cutting rates pretty much immediately. So keep that in mind. But the expectation will start to shift towards, oh, crap, we are going into a recession. We should sell stocks. And that's when the markets really start to do poorly. And a lot of people called out uh, Warren Buffett selling his stake in Apple, now almost $200 billion of cash for Berkshire Hathaway. And a lot of people said, this is about as bearish as Warren Buffett gets. And I think that's somewhat true. And, and this was just last weekend. Warren Buffett had the shareholder meeting for Berkshire Hathaway, highly covered event each and every single year. And basically, 
I think that that is kind of twofold, right? I think Warren Buffett is expecting some kind of economic slowdown, but I also think he believes markets are pretty expensive right now. And I think if you've been in the markets for even a couple of years, which I'm going to, going to assume most of you guys have been in the markets probably since the Roni Rona, um, but especially if you were around back then, before the before the Roni Rona, it doesn't take a genius to see stocks are pretty expensive. Expectations are pretty high. So if recession fears come about, that could be bad news for markets, especially at these elevated levels. If markets were lower, this wouldn't be such a problem. But markets have done well. Not all sectors, not all sectors of the markets have done well, clearly. But the indexes themselves have. Okay, so that's the risk factor, is the economy weakens too much. The good news is, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, I think the economy is going to weaken, but probably not enough to cause recession fears. Or if it does start to, I think you get a Fed that starts aggressively cutting rates. And that's really the bullish part for Tesla. In a perfect world, you would want to see the economy running red hot, inflation low, and the Fed able to keep rates low, or at least from where we are now, be able to cut rates a lot. This is not a perfect world. So you're going to get some economic weakening. You're going to get inflation that comes down. Question is, does the Fed cut rates enough to offset a weakening economy with rates falling. Okay, so what I mean by that is if the economy went, to, went into a recession, it doesn't matter. The Fed can cut rates to zero and stocks are still going to fall, right? That, that's, just, that's just how it works. If the economy weakens a little bit, a little bit more, and the Fed starts to cut rates, maybe the markets say, okay, this could actually be a net positive for stocks. If the economy weakens further and your doorstep to a recession, then the Fed's probably going to cut rates to zero or pretty close to zero. Now, again, the inflation numbers, just to provide a little bit more context here, I do believe they are about to fall a lot, especially for the month of April. That is because you did see oil fall from about $83 a barrel down to let's see, about $75 a barrel or so just in the month of April. CPI is pulled three different times, beginning, middle, and the end of each month. So there is definitely going to be some improvement on CPI for April. I think the bigger question is May. You've started to see oil go back up again, but as the economy looks like it's weakening, oil's probably going to fall even more. And why I point out oil is because oil is one of the biggest contributors, if not the biggest contributor to overall inflation, because I mean, oil affects everything. I've said it before, but this, this water bottle, I mean, this cup, these books, this these computers, computer monitors, it affects everything because I didn't produce it. It got, got shipped here. And a lot of the times it's coming from overseas. And that's a big portion of companies uh, input cost is oil, whether it's making the product itself or transporting the product. So I think on that metric, you're pretty safe, safe, um, parent quotes, um, for your CPI report coming on April, at least in my personal opinion. Now, how does all of this circle back to Tesla? Again, I think we're going to get some economic weakening and enough for the Fed to start cutting rates especially if April's CPI comes in lower than expected and then May's comes in low, it would not surprise me, right? If the next two jobs numbers and the next two inflation numbers come in lower than expected, it wouldn't surprise me if the Fed's actually cutting rates by their June 12th Fed meeting. Now, that's not my base case. That's not my uh, assumption, wouldn't surprise me though. Currently, there's an eight and a half percent chance of a cut uh, June twelfth, and a ninety one point five percent chance of a continued pause. I firmly believe, at this point, you couldn't convince me otherwise. We're going to get the first cut 
July 31st, 2024. That is uh, quite a while from here. That's five weeks until June 12th, and then another, call it six weeks or so from June 12th to July 31st. You're going to have three data reports of everything by then. I mean, you're almost talking August at this point. The Fed cuts rates July. If the economy does weaken further, they're probably going to cut rates at every other Fed meeting in 2024. July, September, November, and December. At the bare minimum, I am expecting July, September, and December. November 7th, they might not. It's going to be pretty political, the election, all that on on November 6th. But I am expecting a lot more rate cuts than the markets are. Markets right now, if, if you ask a fund manager, they're going to expect zero, maybe one cut, maybe two cuts this year. I'm expecting three to four. And that's because I think the economy is going to weaken quite a bit. Um, but I think it will be offset and will be a positive for Tesla stock. And that is because Tesla's business itself is highly correlated to interest rates. And what's the reason why Tesla stock has done so poorly? Let's boil all of this down. It's because deliveries. Everyone thought they were going to be much better in 2024. And rates have made it so unaffordable to get a car that they haven't been. They have not been spectacular. Now, they, they could have been a lot worse. They haven't been absolutely terrible. But they haven't been that great. Just the Fed cutting rates in July will boost estimates for the rest of this year for deliveries, and especially in 2025. The more cuts, the more expected deliveries. So hand in hand, um, it, you know, it, it is a positive for Tesla more than really, I want to say any other company. There might be some that would benefit more, but the Fed cutting rates will benefit Tesla the most. And I think as Tesla sits in the 170s, I mean, you're not priced for a more accommodative Fed. You're not priced for cuts that can start to boost demand. You're just not, okay? That's that's a fact. We're not even going to debate that. Now, where where will Tesla be by the time the Fed starts to cut rates? I believe July 31st, likely well into the 200s. Because markets are forward-looking and they price things in. And then again, there's the risk. If the economy weakens too much, then Tesla's not going to do well. Then the markets are not going to do well. And that's why I think you do want to have um, some cash in your portfolio. That's for sure. I got about 20% cash in my portfolio. I want to get that number up to probably 40 or 50% by July. By the time it looks like the economy, we could have a better understanding of what the economy is doing. Now, coming tomorrow morning, you are going to get some data that will also be important. You do have Fed Bowman that speaks at nine o'clock in the morning tomorrow. Probably not going to be a huge deal. The markets don't care much about Fed speakers these days. Even the ones that are pretty bearish, like Kashkari, the markets kind of just shrug them off. They really only care about Jerome Powell at this point. But at 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, you are going to get the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey. The headline number is expected to come in at 78. But what's really important are your inflation expectations. So one year inflation expectations last month came in at 3.2%. The expectation is they will fall to 3.1%. So that would be good news. Inflation expectations falling. Fantastic. Five year inflation expectations last month were 3%. They're expected to be 3% tomorrow. So if five-year inflation expectations fall under 3%, that's going to be really good news for stocks, really good news for the Fed. Also, Michigan current conditions are expected to go up from 79 to 79.5, and Michigan consumer expectations are expected to go up from 76 to 77.3. I think expectations and current conditions probably fall. So I'm not that optimistic for these two components. And really, inflation expectations, I don't think they're going to move all too much either. If they do, great. But this could actually be setting up for maybe a short-term negative catalyst for markets. You'll have to wait and see how these numbers come out. But consumer expectations falling, um, you know, 
is that really a positive? I'm not convinced. And then following that data tomorrow, you will get Fed Goldsby that speaks right at about 1 p.m. and then Fed Barr that speaks at 1.30 p.m. Tomorrow night, you will get the inflation numbers out of China year over year and month over month. So that's also something to be watching. So let me know what you think about all of this down below in the comment section. Again, I'm not naive. There are definitely risks and the risks are two-folded to the positives as well. Slight economic weakening with inflation falling, fantastic. Slight economic weakening with inflation rising, bad. Inflation rising and a lot of economic weakening, really bad. A lot of economic weakening and inflation falling, maybe plummeting, <laughs> could go either way so i think those are the things we want to be watching for here over the next couple of months my expectation is slight weakening inflation falling if not plummeting especially if rents start to get included in the inflation report in the way that they are actually seen out in the economy inflation will truly plummet but just commodities falling like oil is enough i think to get inflation to fall and that's probably the best case scenario at this point for tesla stock slight weakening inflation falling that could set you up for that first cut coming in june which i think you want to position for now because the markets will start to expect that so let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. And again, I, I do expect by July, Tesla is going to be probably around the mid 200s, 240 to 260 or so. Just my expectation. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. What is your expectation for Tesla's stock heading into this summer? And really, I think the biggest question is, what do you think the path of inflation is going to be? What do you think the path of the economy is going to be? Those are the two things that will drive stocks higher or lower, and specifically Tesla stock. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, every time I make trades, check out that link down below in the description of this video. Most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.